welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the Object 261, the Tier 10 Soviet SPG. This one's located on the north spawn of Cliff, and it's under the command of the base man from hell. And it looks like he's got a nicely camouflaged version. Battle's about to start. It's always that big decision right at the start of the game, which direction do we head? And, well, the base man has decided to go down to the Western Pass area. Good firing area, lots of good arcs. Enables you to shoot at the enemy on the hill and get easy hits on them. You have to choose which side you're going to go to. And he's decided to knock down this wall. And that course actually does give him the option of choosing any of those areas to actually hide in. He's giving the guy indication that he's there but he's not telling the guy exactly where so that means he will be able to move about quite freely without them knowing exactly where he is okay the enemy's in sight he's decided to go a little further over and with good reason because the enemy's turned up en masse on the lower end of the donut rounds out direct hit 304 hit points of damage i thought it was a hit but a they've said that was close so presumably it landed right next door to the T-55A that's the German version of the T-55 the one produced in East Germany the German Democratic Republic which was anything but democratic rounds out front of the vehicle yep that A base one took the direct hit but it was heavy armour and so unfortunately only 240 hit points from that one now this 18 centimeter howitzer, capable of 800 alpha and penetrating 45 millimeters of armor. Standard reload time, 30.68 seconds. Base man's got 25.95, so he's got four seconds off the reload. Nicely dialed in. Right on the front. Oh, you can see the spot. It was just below the turret ring that he hit uh, on the actual front of the vehicle didn't pen but it hit the heavy armor but you can see the exact spot it hit and uh, these guys are pulling back actually they're under severe fire okay he's loaded go for the 2684 fire supply now there's only one rt due to the changes obviously wargaming are trying to only put one rt on either side most battles the enemy's got a batch at 155.58, but as you know, that's got a 155mm howitzer with three shots. So he can put out three rounds, but then he's got a long, quiet reload. And, uh, well, base man is just going to be pumping out those 180mm rounds every 25 seconds. He's loaded, ready to go. Oh, that Object Trouble 7 version 2 looks right for killing. Rounds out. Yep, he got him went right into the side he pulled away just as he fired i think he wanted to get into cover rather quickly just in case that batch had decided to fire one back you notice he's firing from one spot but he's waiting in another to reload he's then pulling back into the same spot he fired from now that may not be a good idea because sooner or later the enemy art he might to fire at the spot where he fired from and might actually catch him Oh, that's a good one. 304. The M48 Pat took another hit at the same time. So he suffered some severe damage. From the look of it, the enemy RT must be away from their cap area. He looks like he's much further away. Possibly up the hill even. Because, um... Maybe near the sniper's nest because he doesn't appear. The, the shells on the enemy are actually arcing in from a different direction. The enemy RT is firing towards the western pass. You can see where the fall of shots coming. Fires the A phase one. We didn't get to see that. I'm going to have to control the camera from now on. Otherwise, we're not going to get to see. There, you can see where one of the shots actually landed. Oh, pull back. He's having a look from overhead view. Now. Can we see that uh, A phase one? No, we've lost sight of him. I was trying there to, to get a view at where those shots actually landed. Okay. 
we're looking for the A phase one. We found, I think that was, um, was that GSOR I saw just going through the frame of the camera? I think he's hiding behind that corner. No, it was a T30 we saw going through the frame of the camera. Okay, T55A, he could be taken out if the baseman can get a direct hit in the right spot. Not so easy to get a shot now, he's just pulled down. A phase, uh, M48 pattern, and he got him! He hit the rear. He got the engine deck. So much bigger damage there. Only got 153 hit points left, but he's already up to 1,500 hit points overall. Okay, the Object 268 version 4 has come up onto the, uh, the western end of the donuts. It's not an easy shot at the moment. Oh, there's the target we would want to hit. And it looks to me like that was one of the enemy RT rounds coming in. So he's changed position because he's now firing at our guys just the other side of that hill. He loops the shot in, uh, but I'm not sure if he hit the FE34005. Okay, you've got 20 rounds with an Object 261. You can run out of ammo during a battle, and he's now on his 11th round, so he'll be at half ammunition after he fires this one. Still got more than half the game to go. The enemy GSOR just died. Okay, what have we got here? Just around the corner, we've got that T55A, the one we saw earlier. He's looking around for the enemy RT, trying to get an idea from the tracer where he's gone. I'm pretty sure he's over actually towards the uh, east, still near the cap area, but a little further east. He doesn't appear to be in this corner, but I think he did change position. Oh, he did. Yes, he has changed position. And now he's in the bushes over here. Now, this is kind of like tweaking the dragon's tail because if he is going after the enemy RT on the counter battery, the enemy RT might try to counter battery him. And as soon as he looks over here, he'll see all these trees knocked down and the walls knocked down, and he'll be able to work out where Base Man is, but he won't know where he actually is at any one specific moment until he fires. So he needs to move the moment he fires to avoid getting hit. Going for the 268 version 4. He's following him. Yes, he did get a hit. And as soon as he fired, he moved out of the way. Only 176 hit points from the hit, but it was a sizzle. So it got the side of the vehicle. Now, this is where I think he's actually going wrong. He's actually moving back into the same spot where he fired from. And if the enemy RT knows or sees the spot, he might try again on that same spot. And then obviously he's in trouble. And we've got the Yegru in the Western Pass. He fires the round in. And he did get a hit for 112, so he hit the heavy armor at the front of the vehicle. Now we're one up on the enemy at the moment. You can see the mark where he hits him. Yep, the side of the vehicle. And the Jaegeru goes down. Oh, now they're all falling. The, that was the Jaegeru. Then the Object 268 went down. Now it's the uh, T-55A. Oh, he got him. He got him. Three kills now for Baseman. That was a good shot because the wreck was in the way, but he still managed to almost bend the shell into him, almost like from the film Wanted. He said, I'm having you put the shell exactly on target. And the shell screamed in and took him out. So, Baseman is having a good game. 2,082 of actual damage so far. Okay, he's having another look for the enemy RT. And we found the tortoise. Dialed in, rounds out. Goes to the right. It looks like he has been hit before, but I think that might be somebody else who hit him there. There's only three enemies left. The Batch Hat 155-58, the Strip 1030, and the Tortoise. 
So only one tier 10 amongst them, and it's the RT. The tortoise is still there. Somebody just fired, and the shell hit him. Rounds out again. Blind hit. Now you can see he is moving sideways. Now this is a good, good thing to do, because if the enemy RT has got so few targets left to fire at, he might try to fire back. And the tortoise just got hit whilst... And it looks like he hit him on the mantlet. Look at that. You can see the round went right into the mantlet. Didn't go through, though, because the mantlet is very, very thick on a tortoise. Rams out again. Another direct hit. But it didn't pen. Just a critical hit. Looks like it may have damaged his gun. Yes, look, you can see it's on the mantlet. Right above the mantlet. And this guy is getting plastered. Four rounds left. Rounds out again. The enemy RT's been spotted. There he is. He was in that corner. He did move over there. So he was right the first time. When he saw the tracer, he did pick the right spot. He did. He was fully health, full health, though. So obviously, uh, baseman Shell, uh, when he fired a while back, didn't actually contact him. But he knows where he is now. Rounds out again on the tortoise. Stuns him, but lands short. Two rounds left. The trouble with the Object 261s, you do have the habit of running out of ammunition, especially in grand battles. He's got the tortoise by the side, but he decides he's going to go for the bat chat 155-58. Oh, no, he got killed. And that means now there's only the tortoise left. He's got two shots left. Got the sign of him. Gets his rear instead. The shell went to the right, but it hit the rear and tracked him. And he's now been asked to platoon with the IS-3-2. Okay, the tortoise just killed our object 704. One round left. Two minutes 57 left on the clock. And then base man's gonna not... He'll be... No shells left. This is to win the game. Rams out. Yes! Right into the side of him. Wipes out the tortoise. Wins the game. And that was the last shot. Last kill. Faden's. Here's the end of battle results, and that was the second class tank of a base man from hell in the Object 261. He managed a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got four exactly. He also picked up a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this one. He managed to get, I think that's 13. Certainly looks like a 13 to me. Yes, it is 13. And of course, he got a Faden's medal because he killed the last enemy with the last round of in his magazine. And it wasn't a fake Faden's like you get from other tanks where they waste ammunition into the ground to try and use the last shell on the enemy. No, he, he'll, he killed this enemy with his last round because that's all he had left. He'd blown all the others on trying to kill the guy. And then the last round definitely hit target right into the side. And that was the end of his game and a victory for his team. So very well done. Look at that win eight, 3,145. A very good win eight as well. Let's have a look at team score. Well, the highest damage in this game actually went to the IS-3-2, the guy who wanted to platoon, but I'm not sure if Baseman was able to. Some people put their settings so that they can't accept during battle and therefore they can't press the button to say, yeah, I will platoon dynamically. 4,741 hit points went to the IS-3-2. Uh, the second highest damage was the Fosh with 3,127, and the third highest damage turned out to be the Object 704, got 2,953. Baseman wasn't far behind, he got 2,877 hit points, which actually puts him in fourth place. When it came to kills, though, he shared the top spot, because the IS-32 and Baseman both got four kills apiece, and that gave them eight kills together, which meant that they carried their team because they have more kills than all the others put together. Um, the next highest scorer after that was the Gorilla 15. He managed three kills, and then there was two kills by the Fosh. When it came to base XP, it was the IS-32 did the best with 1,467. Then came the Fosh with 903, and third was Baseman with 844. 
He fired all 20 rounds of ammo in his magazine, proving again that the Object 261 doesn't have enough ammunition. It should have more shells, especially considering what it's actually built on. It's a heavy tank, so it's going to have a lot of capacity to carry shells uh, and really should be armed with either 25 or 30 rounds at the very least. He got 12 direct hits on the enemy, but none of them penetrated. 18 splash, damage of 2,877, all of it was at more than 300 meters. He damaged 8 of the enemy, killed 4, 200 hit points of stun assist of 16 stuns. He earned 41,019 credits from the battle, and after ammunition resupply, took away 1,419 credits profit. Uh, if he'd actually been running a free-to-play account, he would have made a loss. He did get 7 bombs, because it was tier 10. And 1,266 XP times 2 picked up 2,532 experience points altogether. But as he said, it was a genuine Faden's medal. You don't often see that because most players, uh, they waste ammunition to get a, a, a fake Faden's, as they say. They know that they've got too many shells left at the end of the game, so they just blast them all into the ground and then drive up to the enemy tank they want to kill and blast him into oblivion. Whereas uh, Baseman was actually trying very hard to nail him earlier in the game. But uh, the, the tortoise was being very difficult. But on his last round, he finally took him out with a shot to the side. And proved that, yes, he could overwhelm that tortoise's armor eventually when the shells hit the right spot. And uh, very well done for Baseman. I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.